Tom Loeffler has confirmed that Vladimir Klitschko has been offered £60 million by the zone to end his retirement and come back and fight on that network. Now, Loeffler says he would like to see Vladimir Klitschko fight Deontay Wilder. So he said here, he had such a good championship run that a lot of people want to see him back in the ring. A company is offering him a lot of money to come back. He's one of those brands that fans want to see uh, him come back. I'd like to see him come back. I don't know whether he's content with what he's accomplished in his career already. You know, his brother Vitaly was in the Hall of Fame last year and is the mayor of Kiev. And Vladimir has had one of the most storied championship runs. It will be his decision. It makes sense. And he's been posting videos and photos showing the bug is still somewhere in the back of his head. My personal opinion is I'd like to see him and Deontay Wilder. But I think it would be fireworks as Deontay has big punching power. That would be a tremendous fight. But that's just my personal opinion. I'll make that clear as I don't want to get in trouble with him. So those are the words of Tom Loeffler. There's also a quote here from Deontay Wilder. He says, look, Klitschko, when he fought Anthony Joshua... He was out for two years and he came back and lost the stuff. So he got to build himself back up. He can only live off his name for so long. You get to the point where you're no longer the fighter you used to be. I can't say used to be somebody because he's still somebody. He's still Klitschko. He did amazing things in his career and you can never take that back. Even when I went to camp with him, I learned a lot of things from him. So you can never take that from him. But the fighting scene, when you come back, you've got to build yourself back up, especially against somebody like me, because I'm coming in for the kill. I ain't playing around with nobody. All right, interesting. Here's my take on this situation. First of all, I saw one or two people in my Facebook group saying that the zone seem a bit desperate, trying to lure Klitschko out of retirement. And yeah, they are desperate. I mean, they're desperate for success. They're being very aggressive in the marketplace. They're throwing around crazy amounts of money for people's signatures. So if you want to interpret that as desperate, yeah, they're desperate. I mean, they are having to attack extremely aggressively because there's no love loss between DAZN and ESPN, uh, Showtime, etc. Their competitors are going to show no mercy. You understand? And so they have to go in there extremely aggressive and they have to try and acquire as many signatures as they can as quickly as possible. They are trying to aggressively expand. They're not trying to do this gradually. They're trying to expand and acquire signatures now, as soon as possible. So their actions might appear desperate. And again, yeah, they are desperate, but don't mistake the zone for some type of tin pot outfit who don't have money. These people have got serious cash and they're very serious about what they're trying to do. So again, if you interpret it as desperate, that's fair enough, but they're desperate people with a lot of money to spend and some very, very high ambitions and serious intentions. As far as Klitschko coming back, a lot of fighters, as we all know, historically, find it difficult to walk away, particularly fighters who have tasted elite level success for a protracted period, like a Vladimir Klitschko. He was at the top for so long. He was the man in the heavyweight division for so long. When all of that ends literally overnight, it can be very difficult to deal with from a psychological point of view, particularly when you enjoy the training, as Klitschko clearly does. He enjoys the training, and he's been in there sparring people and still feels like he has it. Still feels like he can come back and compete with some of these much younger guys. And maybe he can. Maybe he can have a certain amount of success. He's kept himself in tremendous shape. And even though Klitschko was at the top for a long time, it's not like he had a lot of wars. You know, this is not Muhammad Ali, who had the trilogy with Joe Frazier, the tough fights with Ken Norton, the tough fight with uh, George Foreman. No, Klitschko's had very few tough fights in his career. Certainly over the past 10 years, what tough fights has there been? 
The AJ fight was a tough fight. The Fury fight wasn't really a tough fight. He didn't get beaten up and knocked down and, you know, bashed up in that fight. No, he got soundly outboxed, but he didn't take a lot of punishment. In the AJ fight, he took punishment, but other than no, you know, even if you want to look at those two fights, other than that, you look at Klitschko's championship run, he ain't been taking no punishment. He's been coming through fights, barely getting hit at all. Prior to the, uh, the Fury and Joshua fights, when was the last time Klitschko actually got hit a significant amount of times in a fight? He got hit with a solid jab against Pulev in the first round. That's it. Um, didn't get hit against Povetkin. Didn't get hit against Marius Wack, against Tony Thompson. Didn't get hit against David Hay. God, man, going back, didn't get hit against Leopai. Uh, God, man. <laughs> you can keep going, keep going, and keep going. This guy is a fairly well-preserved 41-year-old or whatever he is, 41, 42. He's fairly well-preserved. With that being said, you are not going to be the same athlete at 42 as you were at 32. You're not going to have the same reflexes. You might have more boxing knowledge. You might have a better boxing brain. You might be more tactically and technically and uh, defensively aware and astute, but your body is not going to perform athletically to the level that it did 10 years prior. It's just not, okay? With that being said, Loeffler would like Klitschko to target Deontay Wilder if he makes a comeback. I can see why he would want that. Because Anthony Joshua is not only younger than Vladimir Klitschko, uh, you know, more youthful, physically stronger, uh, so on and so forth, but he's also technically quite good. He's not as technically good as Klitschko, but he can do certain things Klitschko can't, like fight on the inside. With Tyson Fury, Fury is technically very good. So when you combine the youth of AJ and Tyson Fury with their uh, technical know-how, I think that's the reason why, why Loeffler would like Klitschko to maybe stay away from those guys. But with Deontay Wilder, while he does have the youth, while he does have the punching power, he doesn't have the technique of the other two guys, Tyson Fury and AJ. He doesn't. He's somebody who can be outboxed. And I know people have been ranting and raving and praising Tyson Fury for outboxing uh, Deontay Wilder for long stretches in their fight. Let's not forget that Deontay Wilder was outboxed for several rounds by Gerald Washington, of all people. If Gerald Washington can outbox you for several rounds, What's going to happen when you get in there with Vladimir Klitschko, even a 42-year-old Klitschko? Luis Ortiz, how old is he? Is he really just 39? Or is he actually around Klitschko's age or older? He outboxed Deontay Wilder for a couple rounds. It's not that hard to outbox Deontay Wilder. I'm not saying anybody can do it. That's obviously not true, but... A lot of fighters can outbox Wilder, at least for a few rounds. Vladimir Klitschko, when he sparred Deontay Wilder, this is well known now. Many, many people have come out and said this. Johnny Nelson, uh, Andy Lee, and several others have said that Wilder was on the canvas multiple times when he sparred Vladimir Klitschko. And I've seen Wilder come out and try and deny this. I'm not convinced by his denial. I believe the stories multiple witnesses have come out with that Wilder was on the canvas numerous times from headshots because people have been saying, oh, it was a body shot. I think that's a red herring. Uh, he might have gone down from a body shot too, but he was certainly down from headshots uh, in my view. I'm convinced of that. It was a long time ago. Wilder has surely improved. Klitschko has surely deteriorated since then, but that's going to live in Deontay Wilder's mind. And I think that's why Deontay Wilder is talking about Klitschko building himself back up first, taking some other fights before he fights me. I think that's what it's about. I actually think Deontay Wilder is concerned 
about Klitschko coming back. Concerned that this old man who's been out of the ring for so long might actually beat him. So this smokescreen he's putting up trying to trash AJ's win over Klitschko. Saying, oh, he came back without any tune-up fights. Even though Klitschko had been in the gym constantly for those, whatever it was, 18 months, two years between uh, Fury and when he fought Joshua, he'd been in the ring, he'd been in the gym constantly training. He hadn't been sitting around doing nothing because he trained, he was training for the uh, Fury rematch, which didn't happen. And then he was initially supposed to fight AJ that same year uh, that he fought, that he was supposed to fight a Fury rematch, but that got postponed because I think Klitschko was injured. Then they rescheduled it and he eventually fought um, AJ later on. I hope I'm getting the, uh, the timeline correct, but it was something like that. So any of you can go fact check this. Klitschko was in training camp several times during uh, the, the period between the Tyson Fury fight and the AJ fight. It was in several training camps in that period. So this was not a guy who was out of shape. This was not a guy who was sitting around twiddling his thumbs. This is a guy who was in the gym, uh, sparring professional training camps, top level sparring partners, staying sharp and preparing for an elite level fight. Okay. But Deontay Wilder, of course, is, you know, trying to make out the opposite is true. And making an excuse basically for deferring a Klitschko fight. If Klitschko comes back, Wilder's basically saying, I don't want that smoke. This is a smoke-free zone. I don't want that smoke. Uh, go make him fight somebody else. And then if he is appropriately washed up, then I'll fight him. <laughs> that is my interpretation of what Deontay Wilder's saying there, people. Let me know you, what your interpretation is in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.